Hi and welcome back to Garden Ninja. Now today's video guide is going to be all about pruning cornus, in particular dogwoods, which are the winter variety to give you those bright reds, oranges, yellows and green stems in the winter. If you don't prune your cornus, what you're going to find is that they're just going to get bigger and bigger and bushier over time, but at the detriment of losing some of that winter colour. So today I'm going to show you how to prune them in early spring to make sure that next winter you get really vibrant stems. So come on, let's get pruning. If you look behind me down here, we've got a relatively new cornice. This one's probably only been in about a year, 18 months. If you've got a small specimen like this, I would advise not to prune them until they get more established. So this one behind me, it's got about four stems, it looks healthy, it's not congested, so I'll leave that alone. So this guide is if you've got a big bush of cornice that you really want to take back and bring out that winter colour. So there are a number of different species of cornice, but this pruning guide is going to focus on those that have the winter colour. And these are the kind of more commonly known cornice or dogwoods such as Siberica, Flavimia, and there's loads of different uh, cultivars in that range that give you those different winter colours. So this guide is particularly for those. So the cornice you can see behind me I believe is a Siberica and it has those bright red stems in the winter and in the spring it puts on loads of lime green growth. So it's the end of March in the UK and you can see that the limey green leaves are out which is the perfect time to prune it. This one's a big specimen, I've never pruned it since I moved in here three years ago, it's a bit of a whopper. So this guy's ideal if you inherit a cornice like this and you want to make sure you've got those vivid colours. Now we're going to go over and have a quick look at the branch structure now and you'll see how that vivid red has turned into almost like a reddy brown and it looks a bit, bit dull, which is why we're going to prune it today. Now pruning corners can be a pretty brutal activity and I'm aiming to take this back down to the ground. I'm also looking to take it back to two buds on each stem which will provide the growth this year and the leafy growth in summer which will then turn into the flaming red stems that I want next winter. So behind me, although this looks like one big cornice, it's actually made up of two. So I'm going to show you on this one here the pruning technique and then you'll be able to see the difference side by side which is a really good way for you to be able to visualise the before and the after. Now the first step that I'm going to take is to cut out pretty much all of the old wood. So anything that's gone really dark brown and is looking really thick and gnarled, I'm going to get rid of all of that because that's never going to produce those bright red stems because it's too old. And for that, I'm going to have to use a pair of loppers like these. Now I've sharpened these, they're clean, they're sharp, they're good to go and I'm going to start by taking out some of that older material. And what you'll start to see is that the newer growth here, which is more red, is starting to appear. So I'm getting a better visual on what I might need to do with that in the next phase when I use the secateurs. It's still some more old wood, so I'm going to crack on. So what I'm going to do now is take a clean, sharp pair of secateurs. I'm going to take this further back down to the ground with these newer shoots. Now ideally, what I want to do is to look for two emerging buds, which may look a little bit like two of these green leaves. And I want to go back to the first two of those and then cut just above the top set. If I can't see those buds, I can have a look down and you'll see ridges where buds will emerge. And I'll do a close up so that you can identify those two. So with this example that I've just pruned off, I'm gonna show you how you can find out where the buds are. So if you have a look closer, you'll see, let me wiggle my finger up, see there? There's like a line that goes all the way around the stem. So if these leaves haven't pushed out yet, you'll be able to feel that, and I call that the nubbing. And when you find that, you know that potentially two leaves are going to get pushed out. So when you're counting them, I would count back from the base of the stem. There's one. Find the next nubbing, which is there, near that ring finger, and then I would cut just above it, about there. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. So I'm going to use my knowledge to know that that is the second pair of buds there. So I'm going to make a clean sharp cut on this one. And there we go. So we're literally taking it back so there's maybe a stump this big with either two buds or two lines where the buds will emerge. So just to show that up close, there are no buds on this one, but I know that this line here 
will be a bud break where a bud may break out from and then there and you can feel it. it's like a little nubbing so I'm going to take it up to there so that's one two away from that bud so at a diagonal and I'm going to remove that so you can see here the length of this is that long this one that I've just cut is a little bit shorter but you're trying to find those buds sometimes it's easy because you can see them other times not so much so that would be one maybe one there would be another bud so I'm going to cut that back as well it's at this stage that you want to remove any crossing or rubbing material take it right back to the next stem this is a really ugly example because it's not been pruned properly for years so I'm probably going to take that one out as well with the loppers take that one back so we've got one two just above snip that's probably going to cross don't want that sayonara so I told you it was going to look brutal and it really does I've taken this brush here down from up there all the way down and I'll show you how I've done that what's going to happen now is all the energy that would have been going into all this growth is then focused onto those remaining stems and any new growth so you're going to get a lot more green vegetative growth this year and then come next winter you'll have far fewer stems but the ones that you're left with are going to be really vibrant because the brand spank is new and all that energy has gone into them I'm also going to prune the one next to it and I'll do that on time lapse so you can see in a matter of seconds how quickly I cut this one down to size. So hopefully you should be able to see now that I've taken down this huge shrub far to the ground. We've still got some of these new shoots and then I've cut back these other stems back to two buds. So everything's kind of got one, two, one, two or these very small baby ones that will then grow this summer and put on the colour next winter. An important point to note is that I've tried to open it up. So although this is in a bit of a bad way and you can see where the congestion's been in the past, if I'm diligent and keep on top of it, I can keep this open throughout the years and then all the stems will grow up this way rather than getting all congested in the middle. So there we have it, my super easy way to prune back cornice, also known as dogwood, to get you that amazing winter colour. So what I'm going to do now is cut all this up, I'm going to chip it and put it into my compost bin where it will slowly break down and then I can reuse it in a year or two in the gardener's compost. If you've liked this video please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're on YouTube itself hit the bell so you get all the notifications and check back for more from me the Garden Ninja with top design tips and hacks to make your garden awesome. I've been Garden Ninja, happy gardening!